So in our second problem here, uh, we have another equation involving powers of x on both sides. And in each one of the terms, we have a different number of powers of x. So there's not really any opportunity for us to combine like terms to make life easier. We're really stuck with all three of these terms being necessary to our ultimate solution for this equation. But there's probably a lot of steps between here and there. So how did you start um, attending to question number two? What was your first step in the strategy? Anytime we have an equation that involves multiple powers of x that we can't combine together as like terms, chances are we're going to want to factor it at some point, or at the very least, do something that we haven't talked about yet, which is use the quadratic formula. That's module 10. But either one of those two strategies requires us to do one thing at the very outset, and that is get one side of the equation to equal 0. Always, always step number one. None of these methods are going to work unless one side of the equation is first equal to 0. So if that's our priority, how do we make it happen? Make one side 0. How? OK. Uh, so one way of doing it would be to subtract 10x to the third from both sides. That way, the left-hand side becomes 0. The other way to do it would be what? Yeah, subtract the terms on the right side. You can do either. My personal flavor, my preference, is to do it this way, only because I like to leave the leading coefficient positive. Leading coefficient being the coefficient, the number, attached to the highest power of x. So here, my leading coefficient will be 10 when I combine everything together, um, as long as I don't subtract that term from one side to the other. Again, it's going to work the same way whichever way we do it, but I like leaving my leading coefficients positive to the extent that I have the ability to control that. So the left-hand side of my equation is then 10x to the third minus 6x squared minus 4x. And the right-hand side of my equation is the all-important 0, without which we can do nothing when it comes to factoring and solving equations. So again, that 0 is the sine qua non. It's, it's what we need. Without that, we can't get anywhere as far as using factoring. OK, but now that we have that 0, that should throw open Pandora's box for us to think about how to factor the other side. So if I want to factor the other side, what do you want to look for first? Great. I want to look on the left-hand side for the greatest common factor of those three terms. So what is the GCF of the three terms, 10x to the third, 6x squared, and 4x? 2x. Great. 2 is the greatest common factor of 10, 6, and 4. And the lowest, the least power of x in those three terms is x to the power 1. So that makes 2x our greatest common factor. And again, in every factoring strategy, looking for a GCF is a good first step. Because that puts the difficult factoring on an expression which is as simple as it can possibly be. If I factor 2x out of this trinomial, what do I have left over? Five x to the power two minus three x to the power one minus two. Awesome. Great. So we took out the GCF. And what we're left with inside of the parentheses is a quadratic trinomial, three terms that are dissimilar to one another, um, and a quadratic because its highest power is two. So how do we factor that thing? Okay, great. So you're setting up to find a pair of numbers, which you're calling m and n, the way the, that Alex does. Um, and you want the sum of those two numbers to be negative 3. Where'd that negative 3 come from? The middle. the middle term, the term with the x attached to it. Okay, so you want the two numbers to add up to negative 3. Um, but we know something else 
about those two numbers? What else do they need to satisfy? In addition to having a specific sum, what else do they have to have? Right. What product do we want this pair of numbers to have? What do they need to multiply together to give us? Negative 2? Negative 10? Where does negative 10 come from? The 5 and the 2. Yeah. So what the product that we want here comes not just from the constant, but from the product of the constant with the leading coefficient. This is what we call the AC method, where that name comes from the fact that we often call the leading coefficient A and the constant coefficient C. So we multiplied 5 by negative 2 to get negative 10. Cool. So now we have our targets set. We need our numbers to multiply together to give me negative 10, and we need them also to add together to give me negative 3. So what pair of numbers is going to do that? What's the winning play in the sum and product game? <coughs> 5 and 2. So 5 and 2 are going to multiply to positive 10 and add to 7, but it seems like we're very close. There we go. If we give the 5 a negative sign, now their product is equal to negative 10, which is what we want, and their sum, negative 5 plus 2, is in fact negative 3. So negative 5 and 2 win the sum and product game for us. Um, so, great, what do we do with those two numbers? This is the step that's a little subtle. Yeah, what do we do with negative 5 and 2? Right, it equals when, when we add them together, they give us negative 3. So we're going to take that negative 3x and split it into negative 5x plus 2x. This is a process that we often call split the middle term. That's what we do with the numbers which win the sum and product game. And we still have the other pieces of the puzzle here, the 5x squared and the minus 2. But we've now used the negative 5 and the 2 to split that middle term. I want to be very careful here to keep my right-hand side of the equation and also keep my 2x that's out here in the front. And now we just need to employ a process that we often call factoring by grouping to finish this factorization problem. So how I'll do that is by taking the four terms. We, so we took our trinomial, which had three terms. And now by splitting the middle, we've expanded it into a, a quadratic with four terms in it, because the two terms in the middle are like terms. You know, we've uncombined them in a way. And I'm just going to write these four terms in my squares. 5x squared minus 5x, and then plus 2x minus 2. And I want to work from the inside of this chart to the outsides. I want to figure out what I can multiply by what to give me all four of these terms. And if you remember from last time, that process begins by taking any row or any column of this. So I usually just like to take the first row and asking, what is the greatest common factor that I can bring out of this first row, 5x squared minus 5x? What's the greatest common factor that I can bring out of these two terms? 5x. And that gets our ball rolling. That's the greatest common factor I can bring out of 5x squared and negative 5x. And once I bring it out, I can ask, what do I need to multiply 5x by in order to get, let's say, 5x squared? So what belongs right here? x. After all, 5x times x is indeed 5x squared. How about here? 5x times what? 5x times what is going to give me negative 5x? Negative one. negative 1. Great. Now the only question is this last <coughs> remaining bit down here. Okay. x times what is going to give me 2x? Two. 2. Almost.
almost too simple of a question to, to overthink. And you can check that 2 times negative 1, in fact, explains the negative 2 that's in our lower right-hand square. So it all works out the way that we hope that it would. So according to that, how do we factor 5x squared minus 3x minus 2? What are my two binomial factors? Well, we're, we're skipping straight to the factorization here. There's often a step in algebra where you try to group them and factor them individually, but that's really what we've done by working our way through this table already. So what are the two binomial factors suggested by this table? 5x plus 2 times x minus 1. Yep, 5x plus 2 times x minus 1. And we'll carry our 2x through and have our equals 0 here as well. But now we have achieved, on the left-hand side of this equation, a complete factorization of 10x to the third minus 6x squared minus 4x. Okay. By first bringing out the greatest common factor, 2x, and then factoring what remains using the AC method, okay, which, is a, which is a form of factoring by grouping, which is what we did here uh, to bring out the two binomial factors. So now that the left-hand side has been factored and the right-hand side is 0, what can I do with it? solving an equation, factoring is followed by splitting. Uh-oh. Computer just <coughs> fell asleep. My apologies. I forgot to plug it in. Hope that just lets me pick up where I left off. Wow, yes, the battery completely ran out. No wonder. <laughs> Sorry, one more second. I can log back in here. There we go. And now hopefully... Are we back? All right, looks like we're back. If you watch this video on YouTube later, there's going to be this weird silence in the middle of it where nothing is happening. Um, but, okay, we're back. We're back to it. Um, so all the factoring is done. What follows the factoring? Splitting. Yeah, we've got to split this equation apart and set each one of its factors equal to zero. Um, so where should I split this one? This is an equation we haven't split before. One choice would be to split it right here. I we already split it though. Well, we split the middle term in order to get this factorization. But that split one expression into two. What we need to do now is split one equation into two. Right? We're going to need another equal zero here. So we actually have three different factors, 2x, 5x plus 2, and x minus 1. So we could split it by taking the first pair of factors, 2x times 5x plus 2, setting them equal to 0, and then taking the third factor, x minus 1, and setting it equal to 0. At least that second equation gives me something which is quick to solve. If x minus 1 is equal to 0, what is x? 1. 1, just by adding 1 to both sides. So one of the solutions of my equation is x equals 1. That's what I get from the x minus 1 factor being set equal to 0. But then I have a second equation over here, 2x times 5x plus 2 is equal to 0. How do I solve that? Any ideas? Well, if you distribute the 2, we get 10x squared plus 2. So yeah, if we distribute 2x, we would get 10x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. But from there, we would probably want to use factoring to solve that equation which would lead us right back to this equation after we factored it. But after we factored it, we can split it. 
So what if I told you that we can just split this equation as well into two? So that what we end up with in the end is three different equations that we've split off of our three factors. 2x equals 0, 5x plus 2 is equal to 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. We've already solved the latter, but now we have two more to solve in the former. 2x equals 0 is quick to solve. How do we solve it? Divide by 2. And what is 0 divided by 2? 0. So another solution of our equation is x equals 0. That's a solution that, by the way, too many students forget about in a question like this. x equals 0 is often swept under the rug. Sometimes what even clever thinking math majors will try is they'll try just dividing 2x away from both sides and forgetting about the solution x equals 0. Nope. You lose a solution if you try to just divide it away and sweep it under the rug. But x equals 0 is a solution of this equation. And so the one that takes the most effort to solve is the one in the middle. 5x plus 2 equals 0. What do I do first? Let's subtract the 2. Reverse the order of operations to get the x by itself. So 5x is equal to negative 2. And finally, what do I want to do here? Divide by 5. So what's my last solution? Negative 2 fifths. Yep. So here is an example of an equation which actually has three different solutions. x equals negative 2 fifths, x equals 0, and x equals 1. And looking back at it from start to finish, what did we have to do? We first had to make sure that one side of our equation was 0. Before you even think, before factoring even crosses your mind, subtract all the terms from one side of the equation to the other to make that other side of the equation equal to 0. Then, factor. And our factoring overall grand strategy starts with greatest common factors. See if there's something we can bring out of all the terms and then bring that thing out of all the terms. In this case, that's responsible for bringing out a 2x. Then what was left over, a trinomial, we could factor using the AC method. And factoring that using the AC method gave me these two factors, 5x plus 2 and x minus 1. And then after the factoring comes the splitting. I can't tell you enough how often students will stop here and not actually follow through on the rest of the problem. We need to know what is x if we're solving this equation. And the way to get there is to split each factor. And in this case, there turned out to be three factors, each of which got their own equals 0 and gave us a much simpler equation that we can solve using techniques that we knew eight weeks ago and getting the x's by themselves by reversing the order of operations.